Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 36 on the Mandalik. I'm John as always, and it's time for some more Battle for Zendikar Crack Packs. Not too long until Oath of the Gate Watch. We just gotta get through the holidays, get into the new year, and then we will be opening a new set. But for now, we're gonna rip uh, up Nixilis here open and find out what's inside and what we would take pack one, pick one in a draft. Up first, we've got a good one. We've got a uh, first pickable card, I think. Clutch of Currents, a single blue to return target creature from, uh, uh, or sorry, target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, I totally forgot about templating there for a second. Uh, of course, you can awaken this, and that's a better option for four and a blue to make a 3-3 uh, a three, three land in addition to doing this. Clutch of Currents is just a huge tempo play. I'm often somewhat happy to play this for one blue, and uh, I'm always happy to play this for four blue later in the game to uh, get through for some extra damage. Love Clutch of Currents. Next up, we've got Calastria Nightwatch, four and a black for a four or five, and whenever you gain life, it gains flying. This fits into the black-white life gain deck decently, as I think maybe a one of. It's a bit expensive to have multiples of this, and outside of that deck, it's really not that good. Four or five for five vanilla just isn't something you want to be playing, so you're going to pick this up late when you know you want it. Don't take this as a plan to go into black-white life gain. You'll uh, be a little bit sad. Next up, we've got Swell of Growth, one and a green. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and you get to put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Interestingly, I've seen this not hit a land more often than it has hit a land, which feels kind of bad because, of course, you're most often going to have lands in your hand earlier in the game, and you're going to want to use combat tricks a little bit later in the game, so it kind of is at odds with itself there. And, of course, we all know green's a little bit weak in this set and not really the color you'll want to be in, so we're certainly not first picking a Swell of Growth. That being said, if you found yourself in green, I think Swell of Growth is a fine pickup, uh, kind of mid-pack area. Next up, we've got Lava Step Rider, a single red uh, for a 1-2. You can pay 2 and a red to give it big fire breathing, plus 2, plus 0. Oh. Uh, bad card. We've seen this a number of times in Crack Pack Tuesday. Uh, you've all seen it in your own drafts. It's a bad card. You don't want to be playing this. You don't want to be first picking this. You don't want to be uh, uh, last picking this, uh, really. Um, just a bad card, not something you want to be playing with. Next up, we've got McKinney Patrol, two and a white for a 2-3 uh, ally, and it's got Rally on it. Whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield, all your creatures get Vigilance. Uh, this is probably the weakest ally that I think of offhand. Maybe there's some unplayable ones that I just can't think of because you don't play them. Um, but even this being the weakest is still pretty okay. 2-3 three for 3 is fine-ish, and uh, Vigilance is a, an okay add-on value ability it's not the best ability it's not th something i'd go out of my way to give uh uh to creatures but giving it to your team is decent and this is a fine filler card for your ally deck you don't want to take five of these and say haha i'm the ally deck uh you obviously want some lantern scouts some blade masters some core blade worlds some good ones but these are fine filler once you do have those good ones not first pickable though Next up, we've got Geyser Field Stalker. This is a four and a black for a three, two menace, and it's got the plus two, plus two landfall trigger. Uh, I don't see this played very much. I haven't played it very much. I haven't seen it on the other side of the table in forever. I, I'm not sure why people don't play this. Maybe it just doesn't fit. Because Landfall, of course, is a red-green deck. Um, the blue-black deck doesn't really want this. The black-red deck doesn't really want this. Uh, the black green deck doesn't really want this. The black, what am I missing? Blue, black, white. Yeah, none of the decks really want this card. It's, it's a red card, right? If red had this, then yeah, red, green, landfall would love this card. But in black, this just seems like a big miss. Four and a black is also really expensive. Just not a great card. Kind of a miss, uh, uh, on all fronts with this card. So don't take it. Probably don't play it. And if you see somebody play it, make a note of it, because it's a rarity. Uh, next up, we've got Cloud Manta. Three and a blue for a flyer. Three, two. Totally fine card. Works really well in blue-white flyers. Works decently in blue-black, uh, in blue-red. Blue anything, really. Cloud Manta is a fine pickup. I'm even okay with two of these sometimes. It's just a decent card. And if your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with flyers, then it, uh, it can actually be a game-ender in and of itself. It, it's a fine card. It's not first pickable, but it's a, a high-ish pick for me most of the time. Next up, we've got Sandstep Bridge. This is uh, a land. It enters tapped. 
you get to give uh, target creature plus one plus one in vigilance when it enters the battlefield and it taps for a white so it's a planes after the first turn you play it it's an okay card i'm not a big fan of playing it most of the white decks uh tend to be aggressive the ability this gives is aggressive the fact that it enters tapped and it's just a planes is super not aggressive so i don't really like playing these ever i certainly see people play them but they never really seem to change the game for me they never cause a game to be won or, or cause a game to even kind of go out of balance it's always just kind of like okay i'll take an extra one or or i'll chump block the creature i was going to chump block anyways just doesn't seem worth it to uh play a tap land to me for that ability Next up, we've got Tadrew Beastmaster, five and a green for a five-five. It's got Rally. Uh, here's one of the the worst ally creatures. I was, of course, thinking of red-white ones, not uh, the green ones. Uh, all of your creatures get plus one, plus one. This is a huge cost. This creature is going to come down really late into the game, so the ally trigger isn't even really going to happen that much when it enters the battlefield. You want a whole lot more than a, a momentary anthem for your team for six mana. Tadrew Beastmaster is just not good the people who tend to play this their decks tend to be kind of the mediocre version of the ally deck and uh doesn't tend to go very well for them uh, of course the deck that i beat when i did my famous malta one and win was playing multiples of these cards and playing multiples of these cards is one of the reasons i had more than enough time to come back in that game don't play Beastmaster; it's just not good Next up, we've got Demon's Grasp. Four and a black for a uh, target creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. At sorcery speed. The only way this could be better is if it was instant or ridiculously cheaper, which would make it broken. Uh, Demon's Grasp is fine. It's a totally fine removal card. It's going to hit a huge amount of the creatures in this format. Totally fine. I wouldn't be super happy first picking it because it's expensive. It's later in the game. It's not something I really want multiples of. I would if I had to. But uh, Demon's Grasp, totally fine card, totally playable, um, just not stacking all that well. Into the Uncommons, we've got a good one, Vile Aggregate. Two and a red for uh, a star five creature. It's Devoid. Uh, its star, its power, is equal to the number of colorless creatures that you control. It's got Trample, and it's got Ingest. It does everything. Uh, this guy is insane. Just super, super, super good. In the blue-red uh, colorless deck or the black-red to a lesser extent colorless deck, this thing will often be a 3-5, 4-5, and it can sometimes get out of hand being 6-5, 7-5, 8-5, depending on the scion producers that you have and things like that. The trample means that it's going to get damaged through. The ingest means that it's going to power your processors even with that trample. Super good card. Incredible for three mana. This feels like it could have been four even. Uh, I love Vile Aggregate. Super great card, totally first pickable in my books. Next up, we've got a Bladed Step. This is a land, uh, it taps for a colorless mana, and you can pay three and a white, tap it, sack it, to gain two life per creature that you have on the battlefield. I like this card. This card has saved me in a number of cases. Uh, I will play this in most white decks that I have, especially the allied decks, the uh, uh, the decks where I think I'm going to have a number of creatures. I've gained, I've gained up to 20 life off this card before. This card really turns the game around. It really puts you back in the driver's seat a lot of times. Now, of course, it is slightly win more because if you have a huge board presence anyways you should be in a decent position at least a stable position but that life gain is just kind of a nice bonus i would never first pick this i pick these pretty late in the pack but uh, i'm pretty to play pretty happy to play them when i do have them our final uncommon is Retreat to Ameria, three and a white for landfall. Whenever you enter, uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can either put a one-one core ally token onto the battlefield. Ally is the important part there, of course, or you can give your entire team plus one plus one. I think this is the best retreat. I still don't think it's first pickable. I wouldn't want to take this to go into the ally deck because I wouldn't know that I was going to go into the ally deck. You know, the ally signals are the good, uncommon, and rare allies. This isn't really an ally signal. Once in that deck, I will happily take this card pretty darn highly. Uh, it also fits in the black-white life gain deck, assuming you are sort of uh, going the Calastria healer route. Just a really good card, but I don't quite think it's first pickable. Our rare is Ruinous Path. One black black, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Awaken for five black black to make a 4-4 land when you destroy it. Downside, this is a sorcery. That hurts so much, but this is still unconditional removal. And later in the game, unconditional removal plus, plus an awaken uh, cost. 
Really good card. Really hard to pass this up. Really hard to pass up such unconditional removal. We just don't get this these days. Uh, one black black is a deal nowadays. Uh, so Runa's Path, I I'm pretty happy to see that. I haven't actually played with it yet, which is uh, going to come up in my conclusion here in a second. Do we have a foil or anything? We don't. Someday I'll open an expedition, I hope. I still have not opened one. So I'm looking at Ruinous Path, Clutch of Currents, and Vile Aggregate. I think Clutch is out right away, and we're kind of looking at Vile Aggregate or Ruinous Path. Now, as I said, I have not played with Ruinous Path, and I've only played it against it, I think, once. So I don't actually know how good it is. Hero's Downfall was amazing, but it was also instant speed, and instant versus sorcery is a huge different difference. So I honestly don't know just how good Ruinous Path is. I feel like it's still just super duper amazing good go in every single black deck you ever want and be happy with it every single time you play it. Vile Aggregate I have played with and I know that it's super, super, super crazy. I feel ultimately the unconditional removal is better. But if you've had experience with Ruinous Path, definitely let me know. Is it just flat out super good unconditional removal? Uh, is it too slow being sorcery speed? Does the awaken cost not happen that often? Does it matter if the awaken cost doesn't happen that often? Definitely let me know what you think of uh, Ruinous Path. If you would have taken Ruinous Path as your pick, or would you have taken the Vile Aggregate or something else, let me know in the comments below. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manaleek. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash themanaleek. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. Please make use of that. And if you like my videos, you can like them with the little thumbs up icon and subscribe to them to be, keep, a, keep up to date on all the latest uh, videos as they are uploaded. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions let me know otherwise i will see you all next time